Here we go and welcome to the idea of technology. My name is Michael and I like my Finalite laptops like everyone else out there. They should be fast, quiet and pretty cool. And sometimes it's pretty difficult to achieve this because they're super tiny and the cooling capacity and the cooling solutions are really limited. But one way to achieve this is to switch out the thermal compound that is previously assembled in the factory for some liquid metal from Thermal Grizzly, for example. And we will do this exactly here in this tutorial. So I will show you everything you need to know, guide you through the whole process so you can do this on your own at home. But just keep in mind, you will void your warranty. So just do it very on your own risk and let's get started right after the intro. Okay, so now we can start with the thermal grizzly conductor knot as well as some cotton swabs. I like to use uh, the bamboo version and two different liquids as well as a screwdriver just that fits our needs to open the device we need to get open as well as some other components to make it easier to open the device um, for the liquids to clean i like to use the arctic clean thermal material remover as well as the thermal surface purifier that makes it easier and the thermal greasy conductor now just keep in mind only use it on copper or nickel heat sinks never use it on aluminum heat sinks so that's absolutely no go there and now we are just open up the device we have in front of us. I have the Dell XPS 2 in one here, and then we can change the thermal compound that's already on the heatsink and change it for the liquid metal we have here. That means we need to focus on all the screws we have here. So just keep in mind, have the right screwdriver. And when you're done opening all the screws, we can just really carefully open the back plate of our notebook or just our tablet. When it's open, we get the first look on the internals and all the heat sinks and everything we need to focus on. First of all, I just want to tell you that on my device, I have a switch to switch off the connection between the battery and the motherboard. I highly recommend doing this so we get not any shorts or something like this. So I just switch it to off and I'm totally done with it. On the other side, if we take a look at the back plate, we have some insulation here, as well as a thermal pad for the NVMe drive. So just keep it there as it is because we need to get the thermal pad onto the SSD. And when we're talking about the SSD, you can just also swap out your NVMe drive when you're totally at it. Um, we have the back plate open, so just do it. And now we just need to focus on the thermals of the heat sinks, in my case, three heat, um, three heat pipes, two fans, and we just need to get this open here. So I first is this aluminum plate I have on my device that can highly variate between devices. So Dell just loves to keep an additional aluminum plate on there to go to the screws. And the next step after removing this is just unscrewing the complete heat sink and the complete heat pipe mechanism. So that's it. So now I have this open. Um, these are all the screws I need to unscrew to get it um, open and can remove the complete cooling mechanism and all the fins and all the heat pipes um, just to get to the die and all the thermal compound we want to switch for liquid metal. Okay, so now it's the tricky part. Um, just be careful because I have also some cooling attached to the VRMs and there you need to be really careful to pop this open and get to the die and everything underneath. So I have here my CPU and GPU as well as the complete heating mechanism um, and cooling mechanism of my Dell XPS here. So um, that's pretty cool. And now we use the thermal material remover to remove everything from the die from the CPU and the GPU. So if you have also a GPU in your uh, machine, you will also do it there. I have everything just on one chip, as you can see, but it's the CPU and GPU. And just be careful with the cotton swaps to not damage anything. And when you're done, it should look like this. So it's extremely clean, but we need to use the second step um, with a purifier to make it even cleaner. You can just use normal alcohol if you want to, and also do the same 
on your heatsink. You can see here I've just copper um, heatsink. Um, that's just perfect. But also keep in mind um, I tell you something about copper at the end of this video. So now we just use the purifier. As you can see, it's just normal alcohol to clean the dyes as well as the copper plates of the heatsink. Now we can just rip open the conductor nut and see what's in here. Um, that's normally just containing um, all the parts next to liquid metal as well as some alcohol pads and everything to clean it up. We just already did this. Um, more cotton swabs and now a, a few things to put the um, liquid metal easier on your dye. So um, that's just pretty basic. We could now just start putting it directly onto the die, but I advise you to use some piece of plastic like I have here and put, put the conductor nut onto this with a, just a little bit, it's just enough, so really, really tiny amount of um, liquid metal and just use the cotton swab to break the surface tension of it and then putting it on the die because um, it's just conductive. So if this gets somewhere else, be on the, not on the die but somewhere else on the motherboard you will have a lot of trouble because um, this could just potentially totally ruin your computer and will absolutely avoid all your warranty so just break the surface there and then just carefully put it onto your die. So this just could take some time, just be really careful to do so, um, no problem, just be really careful, only put it onto your die. You can just use some other uh, techniques to, to keep it there, but um, I will just do it in this way, just be really careful. And on the other side, you need to also do this on your heatsink as well. So I've done it here, um, you can see it, and now you can just put both parts together and also just be really, really careful because it's just conductive. And now we just screw everything together and we're done. Um, just keep in mind when we use copper and not nickel heat sinks, um, a little bit of the liquid metal will just um, will be soaked into the copper. So we will probably need to do this a second time in a year or so. So just keep this in mind. Nickel is just perfect and fine. Um, copper, you can use it. Aluminum, never ever. But when you use copper like I do here, I need to do this again in a year or so. Okay, I put back the aluminum um, plate here. I also need to turn on the connection between the battery and the motherboard again. And now we are just done and I can go and put back the back plate um, onto my computer and I think we are just done. So that's it, that was just pretty straightforward. I hope you achieved the results you wanted to. I did this on my Dell XPS 2-in-1, not on my Surface Pro 7 here, because this would be just way a bit too difficult to get to the internals. By the way, if you want to see the review of the Surface Pro 7, just click up here if you want to. And with my Dell XPS, I achieved around about 10 to 12 degrees Celsius less under full load. So this is just pretty impressive for such a minor um, change in the whole system. That means more battery life, better performance and a quieter system. So it's just really worth it in my opinion. I would do this again because it's just pretty cool. And if you dislike this video, you know what to do. But if you liked it, hit like down there, get subscribed and enable the notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any future video of the idea of technology. And I just wanna say thank you very much for watching. Have a great day, bye.